Welcome back. Now we're going to begin episode four. Joining me is Dave Latimer, and we will be talking about a little bit more in depth with the FDA and their regulations and guidelines around inspections. We just left with Aaron speaking a little bit higher level around audit, and we figured we'd dive a little bit deeper into the U.S. based needs. Now, the FDA, as we discussed, you know, they can be a little scary, especially when you're talking about expanding your quality management system into a broader scope. Uh, today, we're going to speak a little bit more in depth into how to be inspection ready and ready for the FDA in areas that you want to take into a digital environment. And digital environments or digitizing everything <laughs> takes the scary out of those inspections from the FDA. That's right. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Dave Latimer. I have been in the software development world for 20 plus years. I've been at Master Control for about four now and run the team of product owners. So the product owner represents the voice of the customer, so you to the developers to get your problem solved and into the software. And hello again, I am Terrence, and I've been with Master Control now for just over six years, working with the regulated software across the manufacturing, as well as the quality management, clinical, regulatory, and supplier um, different modules. And again, today we're going to dig into the FDA inspection and kind of what they expect when you're going digital and when you're trying to expand that culture of quality and really bring quality into the process and not have it ancillary to it. Now, Terrence, does the FDA, they carry badges, right? And, and other elements, too, I've heard. Masks? <laughs> well, in the COVID world, they probably should. They probably ought to, so very true. <laughs> Um, so again, we're going to talk about where you are, just like we did in the, in the audit preparedness. You really need to look at where you are as an organization as far as adhering to the FDA guidelines in the areas we want to expand out into. And to do this, really that culture of quality comes into play again, especially with the data elements, right? It's not just about capturing data. It's not just about reporting on it, which is ever so critical, but it's also about the quality of data, making sure we're capturing the right elements at the right time and having that information ready for those inspections in the appropriate manner. Uh, there's a lot of digital tools out there today. Review by exception is a great example where the FDA has actually been pushing for quality leaders to start reporting to leadership, reporting to executives, to start really focus on how do we actually bring quality to the forefront and stop looking at zeros versus O's and trying to really understand what those are. And this includes digitizing customer complaints. It includes digitizing supply chain, front to back, making sure that the elements are digitized so that we can really robustly connect those dots during that audit. When the FDA asks for something, they normally want it pretty quick. I, I like to put them in a hot room with no food, and, you know. But that's but <laughs> realistically, when we're when you're dealing with the FDA, speed is more important than a normal audit. You want to have that information ready. They can actually ding you and cause issues if you don't have the information ready. It's all about being prepared, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so being prepared. Um, it reminds me, years ago, a few years ago, I went to a, uh, went to a camp, a summer camp for a week. Mm -hmm. And what does any young boy love to do? Loves to jump in the lake. Oh, yeah. Swim with the fish. Swim with the fish, exactly. Um, now, I was prepared. I brought sunscreen. It wasn't that I didn't have sunscreen, <laughs> but the lake was more tempting than the sunscreen. Ah. So I jump in the lake without the sunscreen, a couple hours later, guess what happened? Hmm. So you had it. I had the sunscreen, yes. But you didn't have access to it. When <laughs> you you didn't have it. it on. Yes. Well, and sunscreen, by the way, is FDA regulated. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> I hope the stuff I had was. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So being prepared and being digitally prepared is awesome. Everything in a digital system. It reduces frustration. It reduces uh, hangups trying to find information. Mm. If everything is in one location, everything's transparent, everything is connecting together, and you can see the data much more clearly and efficiently. Oh, and it's much easier to record and keep recording. You know, we recently, just last week, a new 483 was filed with the FDA where a pharmaceutical manufacturer had 
stop producing, stop manufacturing an element. Well, when you stop producing something in that fashion, you kind of lose the drive to go that extra mile, make sure documentation is correct if it's human based, if it's not automated, if it's not digitized. And that's exactly what happened. And so the company didn't have the information that the FDA was looking for. And their response to the FDA is, well, we stopped manufacturing it. Makes sense to me. Yeah, wrong answer. <laughs> so <laughs> as evidence to the 483 they got. And so th that's the danger in human. It's not just the errors. It's not just not having the information. It's humans just, when you're looking at information, you have to have a motivation to do that. And so that's an interesting example for a digitization. Once it's digital, you don't care. It's yeah. always there. Always there and always accessible yeah. is the key. And so, that, again, that's why digitization matters. It matters to the FDA. They want to have the access quicker. They've been asking for it, review by exception, other elements we talked about. The FDA actually has a plan for this, you know, called the TMAP plan, which, you know, if you want more information on or we can go deeper into, feel free to reach out to us. And, but it's, it's interesting because that, the FDA wants to go to the cloud. The FDA wants that information. They're, they aren't pushing back against it. So to create that culture of quality, to really bring that information in, the FDA is our partner. They are there to help us make sure that that information transfers over. They don't want to be looking at missed signatures. They don't want to be looking at a nine versus a four. They don't want to be asking why this complaint wasn't followed up on. When it's in paper, it gets lost. When it's digital, it keeps pinging the person. I mean, I know in master control, my trainings I miss. <laughs> and so does your manager. <laughs> <laughs> uh, repeatedly. Yeah. And uh, I've had John reach out to me once or twice like, hey, how come this is escalating, right? So you have to be careful in a digital world if you're not keeping up. And it sends those reminders to keep you, keep you honest and keep the company moving forward. And that actually builds trust in the system. So when the FDA is there, that information is traced. And that's what they're after in these inspections. And the, the FDA actually, we partner with the FDA. They use the documents module mm -hmm. in master control. And we've worked with them trying to make that as robust as possible. Right? Exactly. Yeah. They are a great partner for any company looking to take next steps to quality. Back to the auditing, no different for an FDA inspection. They want to be our partner. They want to help the product be ethical and apply it to the industry. I mean, look at the COVID examples. Look what the FDA did for companies that wanted to produce hand sanitizers, companies that wanted to help by producing respirators, you know, and not to mention all the drugs and elements being tested. The FDA is going the extra mile to try and help those get to market faster. You know, it's not, it can be scary. They do have a badge, Dave, they do, but. <laughs> And masks now. And masks now. But it, it's, they really are there to help us take our companies to the next level. So why do we capture data digitally? Um, there's a few reasons. Number one, if we are capturing it digitally, we capture now what's happening now, what's happening today. Um, it allows us to see trends. We can see what's happening potentially on a floor. Um, in a digital system, you can also put in uh, catches. So a, an individual might not be able to complete a certain task if they haven't completed their training. Right. We're in a paper system. How do you even catch that or control that? You find out about that weeks after that actually happened. Mm -hmm. So that's why digital. Potentially digital. after it shipped. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Usually after it shipped. Yeah. So what you're saying is you want to make the FDA's job easier. Makes their job easier and our job is easier. Oh, okay, that makes sense. You're, you know, because really the focus is getting rid of all those disparate data systems and bubbling up real issues that can really be addressed. Absolutely, right? and that's that's the key to any digital system. And so, what type of information do we need? It's it's all the information throughout the process. You know, we have listed here all the different areas. Highlight a couple of them. You know, we have um, coming on here in a little bit an individual from Nelson Labs, a QC-based company. Well, there's so many companies that I've gone into where you walk in and one here locally, a fully automated manufacturing process. It's beautiful. Every dispensary is controlled. All the temperatures are controlled. Input and outputs are all controlled, all digitally, all autonomously. And hanging by every piece of machinery is a 
clipboard with an inspection sheet on it for the challenges. You know, it's like that information is so critical to add to those pieces of equipment. Uh, for example, there's a company I worked with where they had a validated system. Well, in theory, a validated system means it's gonna work forever, right? It's validated. Right? Yes. You'd think. And so uh, what it was is it was a formulation company and I'll get more into that here in a little bit about what happens in their environment. But wherever it is that you have data that you're collecting should be a part of that digital system, whether it's equipment, whether it's uh, looking at employees' training as you bring up, CAPA's involvements, even audit findings and elements throughout. In a connected system, it is so much easier to meet with the FDA and have confidence in your quality processes as you're going through that inspection. So Terrence, this is where we're talking about the culture of quality, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about everything included. So right yes. here we have listed uh, a few things, organizations and, and people, right? Mm -hmm. We have to include those. We have to include the equipment, uh, equipment calibrations and all, everything included in that manufacturing yes. process. There's a lot more than we, than we think about yeah. a it's lot of qu times. Quality at the source. Right. Absolutely. Whenever we do anything, we want to imply quality, right? And that's the key yeah. element. So ultimately, just do it, right? Do, do what? Do, do digital. <laughs> Go digital, Terrence. Oh. Just do it. But it's so hard because there's paper everywhere. And compliance isn't necessarily mandating digital, right? So how do we do it? How do we get there? There's all kinds of tools out there in the world today. Realistically, we have to have management's buy-in. We have to go the extra mile and really instill that culture throughout the organization, right? Quality isn't just in the back corner. You know, they're not a department, right? Quality assurance is a valuable element and it's even more valuable at the source throughout the organization. And so if you really look at the return on value, you do just need to do it, right? You need to make a plan, you need to come out with we have to do it, it's, it's an ingrained culture. We can't improve our own processes, we can't reduce COGS. Inspections and issues throughout the manufacturing process cost real money. Late shipments cost real money. Elements that we have control of, we need to get in and do it. Terrence, you are so right on that. You know, so rare. So <laughs> Rarely, <laughs> oh I mean, Terrence, you are so right. You know, right now, if we've learned anything about our current situation with COVID, all these manufacturers want to switch and adjust in a paper-based system it, it's so much work digitally that is, they've got to be digital in order mm -hmm. to adjust you know where manufacturers are, are changing what they're creating now you have manufacturers that have never created hand sanitizer they're yes. going in and creating hand sanitizer or ventilators um, and without that digital system it's almost impossible to make that shift quickly Oh, I agree. and the perception of easy. You know, we talk about just do it, it's also the easy button, right? That when you first add a product line or you first do something, the perception is it's easy to create a quick paper document. Right. Right, and just do it. And so, but technology has come so far. There's all kinds of new digitization options that are easy to do and are easier to implement. At part of the shift to cloud, right? Taking digital systems to the cloud is meant to ease the transition across. So I think, the FDA is there to, and they want to make things easier, but without that culture of quality being included within that executive board and, and really a seat at the table with those executives. Have you been talking to Erin? She just brought that up. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Don't tell her I said that though. Okay. <laughs> I disagreed with her. <laughs> um, no, but absolutely, Erin's right. You know, the, the quality department needs a seat at the table. They need to be able to help the executives, it's not that they're making the decisions, but they're, they're helping drive those decisions based mm -hmm. on that quality that the whole organization has taken on. Oh, I totally agree. In fact, when you're talking about the seat of the table, I mean, it's, and it's not having a quality assurance person per se, it's quality has, has to be at the table. Manufacturing executives really need to buy into quality. And the irony is they already have 
right? It's just this disparate understanding of systems and connected information. You don't know how many plants I've been in where information is duplicated. Manufacturing, yeah, this is how we produce quality, and they have pride in their work, and they really, really in just innately try and produce it. And you talk to quality, and they're like, yeah, this is how we control manufacturing's quality, and they aren't the same thing. Right, again, disparate systems go away in digital world and bring those groups together in a tighter relationship, which helps get that seat at the table. Absolutely, and bringing <clears throat> all those, that information together, you see so much more into what is actually happening in the product and on the line. Yes. You're absolutely right, Terrence. You know, when you bring all of that paper into an electronic form, into one system, you bring in your batch records, you bring in your CAPAs, your complaints, your SOPs, your training, when all of that is in one system, your employees are then freed up to actually focus on process improvement. You're able to see those areas of slowdown much more easily and effectively. And they can now focus and make the whole system start to end much more efficient. Yeah, they can actually do their job. Yeah. Right. I mean, how many manufacturing employees, you know, on my resume back in manufacturing, I used to joke that I needed to put penmanship as a skill. Right, because that's what's required to be in manufacturing. It really frees up the quality assurance department to proactively go after areas of process improvement, really look at how we can scale and increase, especially if you're a company that has seen massive changes due to COVID, whether it's increase in demand where you're trying to scale systems that are maybe tough to scale. We've gone through a lot of information today and we're here to let you know that you're not alone. Here's a list of master control partners that we have a good history with and long working relationships. And we're here for you as well as needed. And so again, in summary today, you know, we're really looking at the FDA's strong assertion that they want us to go digital. They want us to go in and have better data, better accessible, and be able to make those good management and executive decisions that we struggle to do with siloed information and disparate systems that don't talk to each other. Yeah, most of the manufacturers are doing everything, doing all the things that are required from the FDA. Putting that into a digital system makes compliancy so much easier, so much nicer, um, and it makes life easier, better. That's right. Exactly. And thanks again for joining uh, with us today. Thanks for having me. We'll look forward to uh, talking again here very soon. Excellent.